Welcome to Digital Asset News. I get top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces today. A lot of stuff to go over, so let's break right in. So first up, three reasons why MicroStrategy adopted Bitcoin and why others will too. This is a pretty good story, especially about institutions breaking in and why all the big corporations and entities are FOMOing into Bitcoin also. Unstoppable Domains is giving away the domain of hodl.crypto plus $7,000 in Ethereum and DAI. And I'm going to show you how to enter. There's actually a lot more to the story, uh, which goes back to the Coinbase wallet all the way back in 2018 and how I was actually blown away by the forward thinking of Coinbase. Even though they're forward thinking, they can also be a little petty. And this is a story which talks about Coinbase exits trade group following entry of rival Binance.us. This is the cheese mate for the day. And lastly, we'll go over question of the day, which is brought to us by Yong. So let's break in. So first up, let's take a look at what's going on with the market. So today it is August 13th. It's around 3 p.m. Texas time. And uh, everything's staying pretty stable. Uh, Bitcoin, almost 11.7, uh, pretty much what it was yesterday, 1.4%. Ethereum broke through that $400 barrier, and now it's busting out to 413. Where can we see it go? I don't know, but there was a lot of resistance at the $400 mark, and here we are, so I expect to see big things, but we will see. Speaking of not so big things, XRP, watch out, 28 cents. Tether is uh, gangbusters at $1.01, but Tether's Tether. Uh, Chainlink uh, still up 11.4% for 24 hours, and seven day up 81%, but I believe it was up to almost $18, uh, so here we are at 17.30, so who knows what could happen. Uh, Bitcoin Cash up, Cardano up, everything's up. Uh, uh, looks like a pretty good day. Tron, for some reason, 11%, sure. And then uh, VeChain, everything else, pretty much in the two, oh, 8% for Maker. And uh, Compound, ouchie, down for 10%, but still up 46%. So a lot of good things happening around. Let's see if we can keep this momentum, but let's break in today's top story. So first up, three reasons why MicroStrategy adopted Bitcoin and why others will too. And I got to tell you, um, it wasn't just about that MicroStrategy did this, how they bought you know thousands of Bitcoin and they're going to owe 0.1% of all Bitcoin ever produced, uh, but it's what the CEO said and his conviction to it. So let's uh, jump right in. What's going on here? So MicroStrategy has adopted Bitcoin as its reserve currency and stunned commentators by purchasing over 21,000 Bitcoin on August 11th. That's a pretty good amount. The world's largest publicly traded business intelligence company has swapped fiat for Bitcoin as its treasury reserve asset, but the reasons behind it suggest that more big businesses will have no choice but do the same. And this is a story we we covered, gosh, I want to say four or five days ago, and it was just you know the CEO saying, hey, we got a lot of reserve currency, and we're looking at alternative investments, and one of those was uh, Bitcoin. I think they talked about gold and silver and some other things, and I was like, yeah, sure, they'll get around to it. They're a big corporation. They'll never you know, pull the trigger this fast. Here I am wrong again, and uh, they pull the trigger, and bam, here we are, uh, them buying up it up like crazy. So uh, on August 11th, CEO Michael Saylor called Bitcoin digital gold. And it wasn't that he actually just called it digital gold. It was just the conviction behind it. And it, said, it talks about here, no ifs or buts, like it could be digital gold if it does this, or it might do this if it does that. He's like, no, Bitcoin is digital gold. It's harder, stronger, faster, and smarter than any money that has preceded it. And uh, I'm like, man, Kiwi was that's pretty good. I mean, I like this guy's style. Uh, he comes out there with guns blazing, and he says what he's what he thinks, and uh, that's what it is. Sailor also believes that Bitcoin's very structure will ensure that its value will only increase with time. He states, we expect its value to accrete or grow with advances in technology, expanding adoption, and the network effect that has fueled the rise of so many category killers in the modern era. So this company purchased 21,454 Bitcoin for a price of around a paltry 250 million uh, late last month. May not only be some symbolic, but it also means the company controls, like we talked about, 0.1% of total Bitcoin supply. And that's something that the competitors moving forward will find uh, almost impossible to replicate. Because look, uh, Bitcoin right now is, like we just talked about, hovering around 11.7, 11, 11, something like that. Can you imagine what it's going to be in one year or two years' time? Um, now, no one knows. It could be down to 3,000. But uh, if history is any any predictor, we could see some rapid uh, growth. So uh, for the competitors to uh, duplicate that, very tough. For Saylor, there were multiple red flags that swayed him to turn to Bitcoin. And he states, among other things, the economic and public health crisis precipitated by COVID-19, 
unprecedented government financial stimulus measures, including quantitative easing adopted around the world, and global political and economic uncertainty. And I got to tell you, some people make it so confusing uh, about why Bitcoin goes up. Well, it's because of this this metric and that metric and, and these things. And I, I just look at it, I'm like, I think it's pretty simple. Um, with all the uh, the money printing, all the quantitative easing, all, and just like it says, you know, just this this pandemic that's going on, whether you believe it exists or not, uh, it still uh, plays havoc with the economy. There's a lot of uncertainty, and it just makes sense that uh, different assets, alternative assets like Bitcoin, gold, silver, would go up, and that only makes sense. Now, as uh, and I think what we've seen it is as things have turned around, like there was a, a talk of a Russian vaccine. <laughs> I guess, uh, so, and it, you, you saw prices tumble. And as the economy does better, I think it might tumble a little bit, uh, but it will always, you know, go forward. But I think that was a driving factor, and I can understand why he talks about that. But uh, further on, he states, we believe that together, these other factors may well have a significant depreciating effect on the long-term real value of fiat currencies and many other conventional asset types, including many of the assets traditionally held as part of corporate treasury operations. And if you've listened to Mike Maloney, he's a, he's a pretty, he's a big gold bug. He always talks about Bitcoin. In, in one of his videos, and I'll try to link at the end, he talks about how all fiat currencies for the entire existence of man has gone to zero at some point. All of all of these fiat currencies gone to zero. So when we see something like this, we're like, maybe this is the beginning of the destruction of uh, fiat currency. Now, I'm not a big doomsayer and things like that. I don't think it's, uh, you know, the world reserve of currencies is gonna go away, but there are instances of a faltering and I can definitely see that happening. But to finish this off, Jason Yanowitz, founder of financial media network Blockworks Group, uh, states Microsoft CEO said they bought Bitcoin to avoid inflation. And he further states, eventually every public company will do the same. And can you imagine that? All these different companies getting into it and going, wow, we really, really need to get in this. And, I, and for me, this is why I have invested into Bitcoin and digital assets and cryptocurrencies. And all you have to do, just to keep it simple, look look around who is buying this up. Look around who is FOMOing it. Not, not just FOMOing, but just getting in. So if you look at institutions, I mean, look no farther than Fidelity with their two, three trillion, or I think it's eight trillion assets under management, if I'm not mistaken. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, Ameritrade, one trillion assets under management. Uh, you got Van Eck, who are huge gold bugs. And just in January of this year, uh, they put out uh, this little article or this little presentation that talked about how great uh, or Bitcoin is compared to gold. And they gave seven to eight different reasons. And that's why they're picking up Bitcoin over gold now. Also, you got the big guys, Grayscale. This is just the Q1 2020 report um, where they say, look, we have 2.2 billion assets under management. Now, in just a very short amount of time, they're over four and a half. So they are doing amazing things, not to mention the majority of investments or 88% came from institutional investors dominated by hedge funds. And then you have somebody like uh, Paul Tudor Jones, who just recently, uh, which, which they have 21 billion assets under management, just a little bit, not too much. Um, but this Paul Tudor Jones guy, uh, as of May 8th, 2020, he states he's going to put 2% of total investments into Bitcoin futures. If you know who Paul Tudor Jones is, he's like one of those one of those um, legends of Wall Street that made a killing uh, back in the heyday in 80s and 90s. And when you got somebody like that, uh, who says, you know what, Bitcoin could be the future. Um, you got a lot of the other people taking notice. And then we see what's happening here with MicroStrategy. And I, I, I was looking at MicroStrategy because I, want to, I wanted to save their website. But what was interesting to me about them is that it states here, MicroStrategy is a company that provides business intelligence, mobile software, cloud-based services, uh, found in 1989. The firm develops software to analyze internal and external data in order to make business decisions and develop mobile apps. What do you want to bet? They didn't use all the analytics that they had at their disposal and say, you know what, we crunch all this data and we're looking at Bitcoin and it's a real winner. Not only is it a real winner, um, we're not going to say ifs and buts about it. We're going to say it is the winner. So uh, that is one of the reasons why uh, I have invested into Bitcoin, digital assets and cryptocurrencies. All right, let's move on. Next up, I got an email from Unstoppable Domains because, uh, you know, I bought a domain, but I bought a couple of them. And uh, they said, hey, we're giving away this, you know, I I'm sure you, you probably have got it if uh, if you have a, a domain. Uh, we're giving away hodl, H-O-D-L dot crypto, which would be awesome to have, I must admit. I'd love to have that. 
And we're also given $7,000 on ETH and DAI. Here's the rules. Download Coinbase Wallet. I'm like, oh, I got a Coinbase app. But I don't. I don't have the Coinbase Wallet. And I was like, um, first of all, not a big fan of Coinbase. Customer service is uh, awful. Uh, their site goes down. Uh, the exchange goes down at the most inopportune times. And I got to tell you, as a customer, I think it's just uh, just uh, disrespectful, we'll say. I will say that I will use them uh, if, you know, for off ramps, because you don't remember in 2017, there are different things with exchanges going down. I think some, some exchanges went down yesterday. Uh, was it Bitfinex? Correct me if I'm wrong. I thought it was Bitfinex. But uh, anyhow, going back to this one, when, when I saw this, I was like, okay, well, you know, I'll play the game, see what, what, what this is all about. So I took a look at the actual website. I said, is this real? I want to make sure that it wasn't just some scam email. I went to unstoppabledomains.com forward slash contest. And yeah. Uh, first place, hodl.crypto, you get 3,000 ETH. Second place, 1,000 die. Third place, 1,000 die. Okay. So then, and then I'm like, well, how can I, why can't I click on this enter contest? So what you have to do is you have to download the Coinbase uh, wallet. So let's just jump on my phone real quick. All right. So here's my lovely wife. Let me swing her Apple App Store. And I'm going to search, search for Coinbase. And there it is, Coinbase. So, of course, Crypto.com comes up first. What are you going to do? Coinbase, uh, so that's just the, uh, the cryptocurrency uh, exchange. But then there's Coinbase Wallet and Coinbase Pro. And I thought it was interesting because on the Coinbase Wallet, when I click on it, well, first of all, on the, coin, on the Coinbase Buy and Sell, you'll notice that um, underneath here, it says the developer is Coinbase Inc. Now, if you go to Coinbase Pro, and you scroll down, developer is Coinbase Inc. But when you go to Coinbase Wallet and you scroll down, you're like, Toshi, what the heck is this? So I had to take a look real quick at what is Toshi, and I had to do a little research, which I did check it out, and we'll do that in a bit after this. But uh, uh, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to click on Get, download this guy. All right, now I'm going to click on Open, open the sucker up, pick your username. I'll pick Digital Asset. News, why not? And next... Public, other wallet users can search my username. Sure, why not? I could do private, but uh, I just don't care. I'm not going to keep anything in this. And protect your wallet to the passcode. Sure, why not? And of course, here we go with the backup wallet. I understand. And I'm going to click on back it up now. Okay, that's interesting. I can back up to iCloud or back up manually. I think I'll do back up manually. I'm going to put this in my stone book. Okay, awesome. I got that all done. And if you notice that uh, on, on my browser when I went there, it was all grayed out for the enter contest. So what you got to do is click that middle um, tab right there. Looks like four squares. And then you can start to browse the internet uh, and adapt, I guess. And then, so what you're going to do is you're going to go to unstoppable domains.com forward slash contest. And click on return. And now, underneath there, that enter contest is actually highlighted, so you can click on that. So let's do that. Signature request. Signatures can be used to prove you own this. You own this wallet to allow asset transfers. Yes, or for other purposes. Only sign this from Dapp you Trust. That's me. Sign. We use our passcode, and boom, entry has been submitted. So just like that. Very interesting how they're doing that. They're integrating everything. So. Again, uh, not a big fan of Coinbase and all those things, uh, but uh, it is what it is. So if you want to win those, I mean, that's the way. And I will say this, as I was talking about in the beginning, uh, there was this article, because I was doing a lot of research about it, because I was like, well, first of all, what is Toshi uh, as opposed to the Coinbase Inc. as far as the developers? So I was like, maybe this is a way that I'm, you know, I'm getting scammed. So what I looked at was the Coinbase blog, and I go all the way back to August 15th, 2018, quite a, quite a while ago, and it talks about, and this is right from the blog.coinbase.com. It says, goodbye, Toshi. Uh, hello, Coinbase wallet. Easy, most secure crypto. I had no idea this was even out. Uh, I only use Coinbase and Coinbase Pro. I have no need for the wallet. I do not use it whatsoever. But I thought this was interesting. And they said, today we're proud to announce that Toshi is becoming Coinbase Wallet. This is not just a new name, but part of a larger effort to invest in products that will define the future of the centralized web and make the future accessible to anyone. So right there, I'm like, that's pretty forward thinking. This is two years ago. And here they are going, oh, this is what's going to happen. At Coinbase, we believe the applications of the future were built on decentralized internet internet. Uh, everyone will own a crypto wallet that allows them to access decentralized apps or dApps and that the wallet will be their gateway to the open financial system. 
Toshi was developed by the Coinbase team over a year ago. So in 2017, they actually developed this. When the product launched, it featured the world's first mobile dApp browser. And that's what you need to actually uh, use the dot .crypto uh, domains. Uh, there's different ones like, um, I think Opera has the ability of that. I think Firefox just has it uh, as well. But I know Chrome and uh, Brave don't have it right now. So you can't really browse in the way it should be done. But I guess with this, they, they found this, they did this all the way back then. So later we became the first wallet to launch crypto collectibles. Goal is to make managing crypto accessible, the decentralized web. Uh, with Coinbase Wallet, your private keys are secured using your device's secure enclave and biometric authentication tech. Uh, what can you do? You can you have the manage to um, manage ETH and all your ERC20 tokens, receive airdrops and ICO tokens. That's pretty cool. Buy and store crypto collectibles like NFTs. You can send payments, access leading decentralized exchanges, decentralized exchanges. Maybe that's why they're into zero X or Ox, whatever you want to say it. And explore the full universe of third party dApps that enable everything from taking out a loan or lending to others on the blockchain. And they just actually started that up. You can take out a loan 30% of what you have in Bitcoin in certain US states. So interesting how everything kind of comes together. So yeah, I got to tell you, uh, very forward thinking. However, sometimes you get a little petty. And that's what the next article talks about. So Coinbase exit the trade group following entry of upstart rival Binance. This is just the gossip, the cheese may, right? So exchange operator Coinbase has resigned from cryptocurrency and blockchain advocacy group, the blockchain association, following the admittance of Binance. And at first I was like, is that true? Or is that just some, you know, keeping up with the Kardashian stuff? Anyhow, Coinbase said it was resigning from the group effective immediately. And they state, it is with considerable disappointment that I am tendering my resignation from the Board of Blockchain Association effective immediately, wrote Coinbase's Hermine Wong. My resignation also serves as notice of Coinbase's withdrawal from the Blockchain Association, including all working groups and any ongoing initiatives. And this is where it gets good. They wanted to say that the decision was made based on actions by the association in recent weeks, Although the, letter, although the letter does not call out Binance by name, insiders suspect the resignation was tied to the admittance of the exchange, which was announced Monday. And, and he states, and while we hope the Blockchain Association remains committed to those values, unfortunately, recent weeks have demonstrated to us that the Blockchain Association is not interested in the membership criteria we had worked to establish to underpin the mission of the organization. So again, the membership criteria. Uh, which is they're just ticked off <laughs> that Binance is in there. And then further on, it also reiterates, however, we believe it's important to abide by our established neutral membership criteria and honor majority board opinion. So let me know what you think in the comment section. Should they have done that? Should they just have stuck it out, put out the hand, buried the hatchet and just said, let's, uh, let's make this work. But <laughs> sometimes it doesn't work like that. Anyhow, let's move on. And last up, this was a good question from Young, and it, it all goes about exit strategy. So let's jump in the office real quick, and I'll answer that. All right, everybody, welcome back to the office. So uh, for the question today, it was a pretty good one. This one comes to me from Young, and Young says, uh, "Hey Rob, I was wondering if you might consider doing a video on how you might demonstrate an exit strategy." I was looking around at your exit strategy spreadsheet, and it gives a good guideline to how one might determine at what price point to do some profit take. You know. Uh, if you don't, if you're not aware, in the description of every one of my videos, there is an exit strategy uh, spreadsheet. And what I do is I go over uh, different uh, exit strategies for for Bitcoin, uh, Ethereum, and XRP. Uh, so check that out. Uh, but really, Yong is right here because she says this is really good to determine as far as like uh, all-time highs for what we do uh, historically. But this year, there are things just going way above all-time highs. So you know, how do we do this? Uh, anyhow, she goes. I realized uh, that the exit price point is personal, but it'd be great if you can share some of your wisdom uh, on how one might derive at this, and maybe we we'll start a good discussion from others to chime in the comment, comments for people to get some ideas. Uh, Chico Crypto did an exit strategy video about a week ago, and he provided some good points, one being moving some of his profits to USDC and DAI, although he's more inclined to go with USDC. I am too, especially because of the interest rates you can get. Uh, he does point out some issues with USDC, uh, so if you could do that, that'd be great. So, so here's the thing. Um, specifically, if we take a look at Chainlink, Chainlink doing pretty darn good, right? Uh, so right now we are way above its all-time high. Uh, I remember when I was doing a video just a couple of weeks ago, and it and I said, hey, look, if um, if Chainlink goes above nine dollars, I know that it's never hit that point 
and uh, it's going to be uh, it's you know way above its all-time high. Now today, I think we're almost we're knocking on the $18 range. So you know who knows. So in these situations, um, we can't look at historical data to take a look at what's going to happen. So for this one, what I would say like this is: yesterday we did a video. And we talked about, it was from uh, the My Crypto Wallet uh, co-founder. And she had talked about uh, what you should do is not chase all these different crazy uh, coins. Just go with what you have. And along the way, make sure that you take profits because you never know what could happen, which is, is a really good point. I mean, right now, look, Chainlink can go up to, I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea, honestly. Because like even, even the comment section, someone said, hey, Rob, what's your prediction? I was like, I don't know, twenty dollars in a year, and that could be, you know, twenty dollars in a year. It, it could be twenty dollars in a day today. Uh, we have no idea. So the big thing is from yesterday. If if she's talking about taking profits, and I told you it was sage advice, um, I should really be doing that. So what I'm going to do is this. Uh, I think right now, just to make sure that I stay ahead of the curve, uh, once it hits below nineteen, if it, if it I, I'm pretty sure it's going to go above eighteen. I'm not going to wait for it to hit 19 because everybody waits for round numbers. And I talked about this in my exit strategy. They're, everybody's waiting for $19, $20, uh, $25, whatever it is, to start to cash out. The same thing with Bitcoin. Once you saw 10,000 hit, you saw uh, a lot of sell orders get that were, that were put in that were already there, and people just started to take profit. So uh, this was a, a strategy I learned from Mr. B, and he had talked about use some very... Um, uh, irregular numbers. So, like, instead of waiting for nineteen dollars, uh, I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna go for like eighteen dollars and uh, uh, seventy-three cents, or something like that. Or uh, before I hit twenty, I'm gonna go for nineteen dollars and fifty-two cents, or, or whatever it is. But something kind of like irregular. So, I think for the chain link, again, I don't know where I can go, but to take a little bit of profits for right now, I'm gonna start off with ten percent, just to see how it goes. That's a very uh, conservative number. I think I should be okay. And uh, some somebody had made a, made mention of well, why cash out into dollars because you know the dollar bill is just going to get gonna, it's just going to get weaker. It, it's already weakened uh, globally. I don't think it's going to ever stop being the reserve currency for quite some time. But um, I thought okay, that's a pretty good idea. So so why cash out in dollars right now? Why not just cash out into USDC and use Voyager or Celsius and get um, uh, interest? Uh, the APR is between like six and eight percent somewhere around there. Now I don't think. If you're an American citizen, you live in America, I don't think you can deposit USDC to Celsius. Check me if I'm wrong, but I think that's right. Uh, but I know you can do it with Voyager. So uh, with Voyager, I will probably cash out and put my USDC on Voyager and let it sit there and then go from there. Now, again, don't leave um, too much on these hot wallets because you never know what could happen. Uh, put things in your nano and then go from there. So I think uh, to start off with 10%, and then uh, we'll see where everything goes. So, so Yong, I will uh, update with a more, uh, more en engrossing exit strategy as time comes on. But uh, that's what I have for today. All right, let's jump back. All right, that's it. So I want to say thanks for sticking with me through everything. I really appreciate it. Um, I also want to do a quick random shout outs. If you don't know, there's a join now tab underneath. Uh, you, if you join, you don't get anything special. It's just like a tip. It's like a buck 99. And uh, so what I do is I just give random shout outs to all the new ones and uh, all the existing ones. So Carlos Gomez, Nostromo, which I think is droplet, not for sure. Uh, also, we got uh, Eli Karchoff. Who else we got? Eric Mitko. That's a good one. Sean Thompson, Jimmy G, thank you so much, Jimmy. Albert Allery and uh, <laughs> Duckburg, great. All right, so that's it for today. Thanks a lot. Uh, if you like these types of videos, there's gonna be two that's gonna pop up to your left and right. I have no idea what they are. Uh, YouTube is in control of that, just like uh, the advertisements you have seen in the beginning, middle, and probably end of this of this video. So uh, if you have a problem with those those videos or those uh, ads, if they're scams, don't blame the messenger. Uh, go talk to YouTube. And that's it. So thanks a lot. See you on the next one.